Have you ever thought, wow, it's so hard to use my sink faucet all by myself? You don't want to burn yourself on the hot water, but you don't have all day to spend time turning on the cold water. You have things to do. Wouldn't life be much easier if you could just take all that time you would have spent tinkering around with the water temperature and instead take way longer to invent a robot to do it for you? This is my smart faucet. It controls the water coming out so that it's always exactly the right temperature. These are the individual parts I ended up needing. The Uno microcontroller is the brain, an LCD screen, the buck converter takes 12 volts and turns it into 5 volts for the servos, the relay controls the power to the servos, the 30 kilogram servo turns on the tap, the smaller servo engages and disengages the gears, a waterproof thermometer, and finally a 12 volt power supply. Before getting ahead of myself, I wanted to make sure that the hardware would physically be able to move the tap. I did a prototype of the system on a breadboard and made a simple base to hold the motors onto the faucet. It holds the servos and clamps onto the base of the faucet. There's a gear for the main servo and an intermediate gear that can be pulled out of place. The main servo gear has a standard bearing and the intermediate gear has a linear bearing to easily slide up and down. The clamp uses a piece of filament as a pin and a screw. I'm using this black interface that came with the servo to attach it to the main gear. The main servo gets screwed onto this platform, which fits into the base. The smaller servo goes into the opposite side of the base and holds up the intermediate gear. Then the main servo's platform gets attached and the basic mechanical part is finished. I'm skipping the part where I made sure the servo was strong enough and the mechanism worked, but it did. Then I designed something to hold all of the electrical pieces. First, the Uno gets screwed on, and then the relay is attached to this little platform up above. The 5 volt buck converter just slides onto the shelf at the bottom, then the power connector slides in, and all the main electrical components are in place. Now I need to wire everything together. I'm using a master switch to control power from the wall going into both the Uno and the buck converter. I already soldered together this handy prototyping board to make it easier to route the power and logic to the servos and the thermometer. It connects UNO pins 8, 9, and 10 to the servos and the thermometer, and already has a capacitor for the servos and a resistor for the thermometer. It just fits right on top of the UNO. With that in place, I can connect the 12 volt from the master switch to the VN on the UNO, ground the power connector to the buck converter, and attach the UNO's ground. Then I can set up power for the servos by connecting their power to the shared lead on the relay, their ground to the buck converter, and last but not least the 5 volt from the buck converter to the normally open lead on the relay. With the power supply wiring done, I can move on to the relay's logic. The logic for the relay needs separate ground and 5 volt from the UNO, and then I connect pin 11 on the UNO to the relay's logic terminal. At this point there's technically enough electronics to work, but I want some user interface. This mount slides onto the piece holding the electrical components and holds the potentiometer and the LCD screen. I've already soldered some wires directly onto the screen's leads for pins that need ground or 5 volt and a tiny potentiometer to control the backlight. There's 6 data wires then 2 more for power and ground. The data wires are just connected to pins 2 through 7 on the UNO. With the screen wired up, I can screw it on and wire up the potentiometer to pin A0. There are a few more pieces I designed. The gear that clamps onto the handle, some clips to hold the thermometer cord, and a piece that holds the thermometer at the end of the spout. With the basic mechanism set up, it's time to write the software. From the beginning, I knew that a PID controller seemed like an intuitive way to build this. PID controllers are great because it's a relatively simple concept where you, you use a combination of proportional distance from the target or the error and the integral and derivative of the error. Each of the P, I, and D terms are multiplied by respective constants when calculating the output and figuring out those constants is where it gets difficult. This is called tuning the PID controller. So that I didn't have to walk over to the faucet every time I wanted to tweak the controller, I wrote a really simple simulator to visualize the values. 
It simulates the theoretical temperature using a weighted average of how open the taps are. The real temperature a person might feel using a small window moving average of the theoretical temperature and the thermometer reading, which is a large window moving average of the real temperature to simulate a delay of the thermometer reading. It runs the simulation for 40 seconds where it plots all of those temperatures along with the amount that the controller has opened the cold water tap. On the other plot, it shows the individual PID values and the overall output. After finishing the core controller, I implemented some other features, like getting the LCD screen to show the current and goal temperatures, moving the smaller servo and turning on or off the relay to engage or disengage the motors, and reading the goal temperature value from the potentiometer. Then it was time to test it out. It worked all right, and this was a good way to get close to the right PID values, but it didn't work great in the real world. I had to make a couple tweaks. First, I realized that the delay of the thermometer reading was even longer than I anticipated, which caused it to oscillate quite a bit as it was always trying to catch up to the real value. I found the fix to this was using a much larger constant for D and smaller for P to prevent any quick changes to the system. In the real world, I especially wanted to avoid the water being too hot. It'd be better to be too cold than to burn someone, so I added a special case for the PID controller where it makes the D constant much larger if the temperature is increasing. Finally, I also realized that the thermometer reading had a resolution of around a tenth of a degree Fahrenheit, which is fine, except that the plot wasn't continuous, so the calculated derivative had tons of noise. My solution was to use a moving average of the derivative to smooth it out, which seemed to work much better. After implementing those things, the PID controller was working well, and it was time to finish up the hardware. I can go ahead and put on the outer casing, which means I have to take off the screen and the dial. The lower part holds the majority of the wires inside. With the lower part on, the upper part slides over the screen and onto the base. The screen gets reattached with the cover, the dial gets put back on, and everything gets screwed together. Last, the dial cover goes on and the electrical control piece is finished. To protect the gears from water, I designed housing to go over the mechanical parts too. With almost everything put together, the rest of the setup has to happen next to the faucet. The thermometer gets attached and the gear gets clamped onto the tap. Then the rest of the mechanical parts are clamped around the base of the handle. Another little case holds the junction where the motors and thermometer connect with the wires coming from the Uno. This just slides up against the mechanical housing. Then all the wires get stuffed inside and the top piece holds everything together. The last thing to do is to turn it on, and set the goal temperature. Now, this video is sped up a bit, but when I turn on the hot water, the temperature reading goes up, so the system turns on the cold water to compensate. Then when I turn the hot water off, the temperature drops and it turns off the cold tap. I need to do a bit more fine tuning, but it works pretty well. A nice feature is that the cold tap moves freely when it's not being used. Here you can see how the intermediate gear engages only when the system needs to adjust the cold tap. Well, that's how I designed and built a PID water temperature controller. Thanks for watching.